Hello, media arts and intro to video students, and welcome back to your final lesson. So this week we're going to be talking about how to hand in your final project for your mini documentary about whatever elective that you chose to make it about. We're also going to talk about making sure you have all of your work handed in because the semester ends. We only have seven days left uh, of that semester. So on the 10th uh, is going to be a grading day and I'm going to make sure that I have uh, all of your work in to make sure you can earn the grade that you deserve for this class. Okay, we're also gonna talk about the top five production tips. Now, for my video students, you saw this in an earlier video where we talked about some of the basics. We'll quickly review that, but then you can jump ahead in the video just to our finishing piece of this. And uh, we'll have one more video next week where we're gonna celebrate some of the awesome work that we've done, as well as you're gonna have a little exit survey. So let's jump right into this week's goals. I'm gonna give you some late work reminders. We're gonna review those production tips and then you're gonna finish and hand in your final project. So the top five production tips, so stick with me intro to video students for just a moment so we can review them, is you are going to film with your phone sideways. You're going to film B-roll from a variety of angles or use stock footage that has a variety of angles or screen recordings from as many angles as you can, but we've got to get creative there. You're going to make sure your music lowers while there is talking and fades at the end. And then lastly, you're going to start and finish your video with titles. So if it's a media arts video, it's going to start by saying media arts. If it's a art video, art, you get the point. So it's going to start and finish with titles. And then lastly, you're going to make sure that you've got stabilized footage. So let's get into all of those things. Video students, since you've already seen this part, feel free to skip ahead to this point in the video where we'll just talk about some final things. Let's get into those top five tips. So first off, let's talk about filming with your phone sideways. So unless you're making a video that's planned for TikTok or for Instagram and is only going to be viewed on a phone, you always wanna think about holding it sideways, right? Don't have your phone in the vertical portrait orientation. When you do that, you end up with these black bars on the bottom of your screen. Look at these two pictures, that, these two videos that I have here. We don't want to fill the screen this way. Now, if this video on the left here was um, just for a cell phone, it's actually going to fill the phone perfectly without having to turn it. However, for these projects, they are for Heron TV. They are as a video production designed to be seen on a computer or on a television screen. So you're going to want to have that phone turned sideways. Notice how it's gonna fill the frame completely, as you can see Yoda and I sitting on the couch there. Looks much better in the image on the right because I've had that phone turned. So, um, by the way, all of these tips that I'm coming up with are all mistakes that I saw in people's videos that they've turned in so far. So some of you recorded vertically. Let's not record vertically, let's record with our phones being sideways. The next tip is, Film your B-roll from a variety of angles. So here is my video from last week that you saw. And uh, so my narration is pretty straightforward. Yours is probably going to be very straightforward as well. It is a stabilized medium camera angle, pretty simple. But as I cut to my B-roll, there are going to be lots of different angles, right? We have a zooming in close-up. We have a medium shot. We have another close-up. I'm switching from angle to a from angles to angles. When I'm staying at two angles of the same, notice I've got some animation to it, so I'm adjusting the scale of my shot so that it makes it look interesting. So almost all of the cards are done in close-up because they have to be, almost all of the basketball is done in medium or long because it kind of has to be as well. Um, and so just think about how you can use a variety of angles in your B-roll. It's what makes it look interesting. You can also try doing some transitions from shot to shot. Just play around with it. Uh, the biggest thing about getting good at filming B-roll is just practicing and filming enough. It never hurts to film more. I probably had 10 minutes of footage of me playing basketball to edit down 30 seconds of me playing. So just let that camera roll, get all the different angles. You never know what you're gonna get. Plus it always makes for good outtakes at the end of a video uh, as you have lots of mistakes or times that you don't make that shot. So the next tip, tip number three, is to make sure that your music lowers while there is talking and fades at the end. 
So while I'm talking, if you have a song playing, it can be distracting. Now, sometimes it's nice to have music playing, but you have to turn that volume way, way down. So here's a screenshot that I have of my Wii U video timeline, and it can show you how my, uh, how I have a song playing, and then it's going to fade at the end. Now that song playing here has not been lowered, so because of that, you're probably not going to be able to hear my talking clearly. You'd wanna go in and you can split the clip into different places, and then you can lower the volume there. There's a variety of ways to do this, but a great way to proof, I guess proof view, wouldn't really say proof read for a video, to proof view this would be to show it to someone else and say, did you understand everything that I just said? Right, so run it past your parents or a brother or sister. Maybe they'll say, wait, what, what, what did you say there? And you'll probably want to lower your volume, right? So lowering the volume of a track usually helps. Sometimes you don't even need music at all while there's talking, but the most important thing is, if you have a song playing in your video and you don't use it until the end of the song, you're going to have a very abrupt ending unless you have a gradual fade. So what you're able to do is click on that audio icon you can see next to the trash can there. And on that audio icon, when you click on it, um, it has a fade box that you can check or uncheck. When I have it checked, you have your in and your out. Now, I don't need to fade in because it's the beginning of the video, but I do want it to fade out, so I selected for two seconds. And then the lines appear where you have those two dot the blue line with the two dots. You can actually just drag the handles of the dots to adjust the distance as well. So you can make sure your audio comes to a nice gradual fade and it's much more pleasing in your video when that audio just naturally kind of falls off as opposed to just stops. Okay, so make sure that you have music lowered while you're talking and it fades at the end of your video. No abrupt ends. Okay, the next one, tip number, is it four? That's right, tip number four. All right, you are going to start and end your video with titles. This lets us know that a new section has started. So here is my, let's call it a random fact of the episode, just to demonstrate how this is working here. I have a opening title at the beginning of my video that says the random fact of the episode. Now, I can always add one that I use on each episode of Heron TV, but there's no reason why we can't use your own. And Wii Video has lots of great title options, so play around with it. You can actually get this bow tie effect right from Wii Video. So I have uh, my opening title that says random fact of the episode. And then while I'm talking, whenever I give my fact, I wanna support that in text. First off, that's gonna make it easier for the viewer to understand because they're gonna see it reinforced in writing as they're talking, right? But um, notice I have it see text reinforces your message. So you wanna go ahead and have text while there's key parts of your video playing and then to start and end. It helps kind of bring some closure or introduce your segment. That is tip number four. Now tip number five is a very, very important tip and this is to stabilize your footage, right? So notice that we have this little uh, cartoon drawing of this man uh, taking pictures here and he's got his elbows tucked in against his body. If you are filming handheld, Go ahead, I call that alligator arms. Put those elbows against your body because then your hands are not going to shake as much as if you were to hold them out. When you hold your hands out away from your body, they are going to shake more. So if you're just holding your phone while you're talking, it is totally fine to do this, but go ahead and try holding it with your elbows against you or try and have it um, stabilized against an object, against a wall, against a railing. Anything you can do to help keep your camera stable is great. I have my camera right now on a tripod. You might not have a tripod, but remember those coffee cup tripods that we made work great for keeping your camera stable. So make sure it's stabilized. Now, if you're filming something where you're following action of your pet or something and there happens to be some motion shake, that's okay because that's natural and that's what you would feel. But if you're just listening to someone talk, it is incredibly distracting to watch their footage shake, right? I can't even watch this example that I filmed here with me shaking. Do you see how shaky footage can be kind of annoying to watch? Stabilize it, it's much better. <sighs> that is much better. Notice how you just want to have your footage 
stable. It is a great way to do it and use the tool in order to do that. If you're having someone else film you, make sure to teach them the alligator arm so that they can keep their elbows attached to their body as they are filming and then that's going to keep them stable as well. All right, if you already turned in your video, um, you're gonna make sure that you have it attached to this week's assignment. I want all of them in one place. So last week you handed in your script. That was half of the points for this assignment. That's worth 10 points. The other 10 points are for this video being turned in. So make sure you get it in as soon as possible. If you're already finished with the video, just go ahead and turn it in today so that I can start grading these. It's gonna be really hard to hand these in late since they're due on Friday, and then we only have two more days of the semester before I have to enter in your final grades. So make sure you've reviewed the five production tips, take another watch of your video, maybe even have someone else watch it for you and then give you a little bit of feedback. Maybe you can just make a few minor changes to make the video look as polished as you can because remember, some of these are gonna be on Heron TV. Um, lastly, with our final project, you are going to make sure that you have it exported correctly. If you used WeVideo, which I highly recommend for anyone that's just using a free uh, editor that they're finding online, please use that over ClipChamp um, since it has a little more features for what we're gonna be doing. Um, you're gonna go ahead and export that. I shared a video with you earlier about how to make sure you can export correctly. Make sure you have the little Google Drive icon pressed and then it's going to automatically go into your Google Drive. That way when you go to Google Classroom, you're gonna be able to find the assignment. Uh, this week's assignment, you'll hit an add from Google Drive and attach your assignment and then you'll get full credit for all of that. Like I was saying before, this is our final lesson, but we are gonna have a video on Monday where we're gonna celebrate some of the great work that you've been doing all semester long. And then I also have an exit survey for you that I want you to fill out so that you'll be able to give me a little feedback. But that'll be next Monday. So uh, go ahead and finish up your video this week. Next week, we'll just have one more video where we're gonna celebrate a little bit and have that exit survey that I was talking about. So we had our late work reminders. Make sure they're in because uh, I've, I'm gonna be entering grades on Wednesday the 10th. If you don't have it in, uh, by the 8th or the 9th, um, it's going to be very difficult for me to make sure everything is in. Get that in right away so that you can get credit for your work. Um, we reviewed those production tips, so make sure that you go through it. Even better yet, have someone else review your video for you. A second set of eyes always helps when you're doing some uh, proof viewing. And then lastly, make sure you've got it finished and turned in so you can get credit. Make sure you can earn a P for this class. And... Uh, I will see you next week to celebrate and talk about a few other things. So good luck finishing up your video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to stop by office hours. Uh, that's every single day from 1.30 to 2.20. I'm available and I'll be able to help you finish your video. So remember, Herons, never stop creating and I'll see you in the next video.